Hunter x Hunter episode 92. Yeah, it sucks. It's gonna be a long ass 30 days. Hard for Kalua too. I mean, they both lost. Due to their personality differences, Gon a little bit less able to, to cope with his inadequacy in this moment. But Kalua is also dealing with it. And not only that, Kalua is dealing with watching his friends suffer, who he's vowed to take care of and protect. This feeling of absolute desperation at one's own weakness and failure, it evokes a very particular memory for me. One wish X and X two promises. Interesting. Oh, Colts in the big city. So he didn't kill him after all, or did he? What's he doing with that knife? He's not shaving. Oh, is that for dishonor? <laughs> oh, I got a lucky shirt. You know the answer already. I think we already know the answer. He, he knows too. He already knows. They, I guess they probably don't know. It's nothing. Drop of water in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, not even them. And there's three of them. <laughs> okay. This is the guy who's in charge of the Nen world. Or the Hunter licensing world. Crazy as ever. Damn, that means that Knuckle and the other guy are there alone. Alright, at this point, do we get everyone? Do, do we get everyone? Finally? Since the initial plan failed? Okay, they rejoined. Not that it'll do any good. Not that it's really reassuring. I was thinking about Knuckle and how cool his power is, and like, it feels like it has unlimited potential and you could beat anyone with it, but the glaring weakness is he has to be able to land a hit, and then, subsequently, he has to be able to avoid getting hit, right? And I don't see that happening in this case. Now I'm wondering if there is a proximity limitation to it. Like, can you s score a debt and then using someone else's then like, teleport or something like that? You know what I mean? But this is not what she expected when she went to medical school or veterinary school. They're a huge mix of DNA, right? This vet is truly committed to her job. She's trying to save a giant death ant. I cannot bring myself to care. <laughs> but the queen's life. I'm here, mommy. Oh, God, of course, but... He was perfect. Except for a weird little hat. He could be anywhere right now. A mother's love. Sickening. Born is one way to put it. He like, born himself. They're all kind of the same, though. They're all just following their programming up to this point. Stop, man. Damn. Stop it, cult. Give my son a massage. <laughs> right, of course. Please stop this woman from giving any more names. <laughs> she has to be stopped. Just let her die. Why? Where is she pulling this from? Oh, there's actually a meaning. I don't think he really cares, but okay. 
What the sh- Oh. Uh, this love looking somewhat unilateral. Oh no! <laughs> the queen! Why? Couldn't have happened to a nicer ant lady. They really capture something absolutely sickening about nature with that whole speech. The whole everything for my son speech. That sort of raw programming. Protecting my progeny at all costs. That cancerous competitiveness where nothing matters outside of proliferating my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Knuckle, what a softy. What is it, like a twin brother or something? What the... what? Oh, he has a twin! What does this mean for the story? Take that, I guess? Okay. Well, history says you will, <laughs> but... That's great, it's only to live for. Um... This is gonna come to head very quickly. They're showing a lot of faith in the ants, who this, up to this point in their eyes have done nothing but follow their programming. This is a room of softies. Everyone is just touched. <laughs> I try to play it off. Bizarre. It's absolutely bizarre. This whole thing. Memories of his sister, yeah. This feels like the end of the story for, for Kurt for now. Does that work as closure for him? He gets something to take care of, some redemption off screen, which leaves the potential for something in the future where that other king or queen or whatever is an adult having been raised in the human world. Like I said, I think that scene did such a great job capturing what I feel is such a disgusting element of nature. It's not that genetic imperatives are disgusting inherently. It's not that procreation is disgusting inherently. It's something like the slavish compulsion to follow genetic imperatives in a sort of machine-like, unthinking, uncaring way. In ways that end up causing massive destruction. You know, like a cancerous cell has its own survival in mind, but cancer is a terrible force and there's no greater cost or there's no greater purpose. It's like the natural imperative gone wrong or not being used for its highest function or used to counterproductive functions. There is something pure and beautiful about them. You know, like you can think of it as a minimum guideline you need for the existence of life at all. Like without any kind of gen genetic imperative, without a survival instinct, life doesn't go very far. But for that minimum to dominate or be confused for the maximum is a terrifying reality. One of the most appealing aspects of humanity is we have the, the higher faculties, the ability to think and choose beyond our rational programming. And you might look at that as something that is outside of nature, but I think it actually ends up being very much a part of nature, where the strategies that are best for one's immediate survival in a very zoomed in perspective on a very local playing field moment to moment, tend to undercut the aims of those mechanisms in the first place. So if there's absolute selfishness for one's own survival, that is probably a great strategy for one's survival in a moment where there is intense competition and risk of death. But for everyone to hold those kinds of views or practices where the only thing that matters is my own survival at the expense of all else, that actually is an overwhelmingly destructive force, not only for the, the species, but for your genetic lineage. The minimum base safeguards cannot be allowed to rule. I think maybe that's part of why we feel so disgusted by, by certain animals and creatures. Insects are a great choice for this. Like, cockroaches. They, they breed incredibly fast. They're really hard to kill, extremely resilient. I'm convinced at one point it contained a major threat for humanity, otherwise we wouldn't have such uh, an extreme visceral reaction to them. And maybe also why we innately hate humans who exhibit selfish and destructive behavior. One crazy extension of this for humans, though I think it's important not to pretend like we can throw away base genetic instincts, but to keep that in mind simultaneously with higher ideas, is that while we're programmed to operate mostly around genetic coding, there are other kinds of legacies that people pass, such as ideas, a chain of cause and effect caused by one's good deeds. There are multiple types of DNA-like things for humans from which to create legacy and contribute to like the growing expansiveness of what is. How do you, what do you do for 30 days? You can't even, can you even train them? Like, train your body? Kalua can train. He's gonna watch go and cry. I empathize really strongly with Kalua. What else is new? My heart aches for Gon. It aches, it aches more for Kalua. <laughs> Oh boy. I know someone like this, crazy to say.
出会いはあんたの方が早いけどカイトとの付き合いは私たちの方が長いからこの山を越えてもまだウジウジしてたら叩き下ろすとこだったわよ I mean, Gon is good at processing things in the way he needs to process them. Gon doesn't really waste negative emotion. It's one of his greatest traits. One of the craziest examples I've seen of this, my friend broke up with his girlfriend of six years and went through like a really hellish period of torment and sadness that lasted 24 hours. And then like he was done. And there was never any lingering sentiment one way or the other after that. And if I had to guess what's behind that, it would be a couple things. One would be there's no internalization of anything that isn't productive. So it's not、uh, writing this narrative of I'll never be happy, I'll never have anyone, I'm doomed to failure with relationships, I'm ugly, whatever it is. If there is any rumination, it's like, what do I honestly feel I did wrong? And how do I make sure I never make that mistake again? And once that like genuinely happens, even in my own personal experience, that has a way of dulling the edge of the pain quite significantly. In fact, you might argue that the reason pain exists at all is to serve as a reminder and a warning. For perceived dangers in the future. But if you feel confident that you are prepared for those dangers, perhaps most importantly, just being able to see the dangers clearly and articulate them to yourself, that dulls the sharpness of that blade. Another one of them might be something like just having big things to do, having a bigger focus. What does it matter in the grand scheme of things if, if you have really important work to be done? What are you going to do about it, in other words? And also, like I've been thinking a lot about, a very high level of skill at processing emotions and looking at emotions and thoughts in a way that is sort of one level removed, or you're able to have a third party view on them. And really think about them carefully with a clear mind that's not corrupted by those very emotions. And if you can do that, a lot of things that seem like the end of the world lose their fangs pretty quickly. And I think even having not experienced this, you can understand this with the benefit of hindsight. So, personally, there have been plenty of times in my life where I thought, this is it, you know, like, This is the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. I'm never going to recover from this. And, you know, now looking at those things, they're absurd. They're completely insignificant to the, the grand scope of my life. Go and just put himself through that very quickly. Another one would be something like、uh, pride. Like, do you want to be the kind of person who's, you know, succumbing to their emotions and just done? Game over? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of similar to what I was saying. Yeah, physical. Improve your physical body. I think we need weights or something. How big is the debt if being a hunter doesn't pay the bills? Just for this bird. That's a debt to Kite. He's paying it forward. That was his life, too. They also were precocious kids. If there's a world left to go back to, Ant's gonna eat all the swans. Jing and Gon's relationship is so fascinating. Like all these things that Jing started for other people Razor, Kite. It sucks for Gon. But then again, maybe in Jing fashion, it was the perfect move. Because would Gon have become this without it? It's really hard to know. Is it the highest form of love that he abandoned him? I don't know, man. It's, it's really hard to say. I guess it's a difficulty with kids. You don't know what's the best touch since there's so much variance in personality and needs. Anything you do could end up being you know, positive for them or negative for them. I could leave, please, for God's sake. No. Can't, we need to regroup. I don't need to like, send an announcement. Everyone regroup. And I mean everyone. I don't want to see. I'm not ready for Kite to die. Okay, thank God it's not one of them. Oh, it's Kite. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Good for you. It's over. Is it not just over at this point? How the only chance I can see is if it's one of those things where you, you kill the king and everyone else dies. But I don't think that's the case for the ants, given the way they're meant to faction off. This just became an international war. They're now kings. Spreading destruction in terrible fashion all around the world. I got special food here or what? La 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 la. I hate you. 
<laughs> the time for every hunter in the world to assemble was a month ago. But barring that, it's right now. What other option is there? My favorite part of the episode by far was Gon snapping himself out of his funk. Because I felt fully the depths of his pain, but it also doesn't feel to me like a cop-out that he snapped out of it. I think we know enough about Gon to, to have that feel authentic and to get a sense of why that is. I think that's what Shonen does so well. I think that's why certain character archetypes are so persistent. Is It's because I think it's right. If the correct focus is there, if the correct mindset is there, if you're only using inputs and your thoughts and feelings as things that strengthen you and completely avoiding anything that sticks to you like a poison that weakens you unnecessarily that is there from some long ago childhood state that's never been re-examined and speaking of minimums was there to keep you safe at one point but is suboptimal compared to what you could be and how you could operate it's the epitome of in the light of unknowns as long as it's not delusion as long as you're able to see things honestly because you'll need self-honesty to correct and to proceed with life in a way that is productive and successful, you always take the highest, most productive outlook. Gon definitely capable of self-delusion. That's the big danger to him, right? He's very likely to get himself killed. So it's not perfect, but man is it inspiring to watch in action. <laughs>